Hi guys, welcome back. I was going to do just one more video on how to do this picture and the lighting. I'm a little bit apprehensive about the tree. I think I can do it, but I'm really not 100% sure. Looks very complicated, very detailed. When I was looking through this book on YouTube, I didn't see any pictures done in this book. Now, that tells me something. People are not coloring in it. They feel a little afraid of it. So, there's plenty of people who own this book. I mean, I ran into hundreds of flip-throughs on it, but nobody actually working in the book. There was a couple of half-tries that didn't finish the picture, and believe me, I know, because I've started in this book, and this is the first time I'm finishing a picture. I looked on this picture and I was like, what could be frightening people that they don't feel that they can do it? And part of what I was seeing it on this picture is the landscaping. And these landscape trees up here. This was the easiest part of the entire picture. This whole area over here. Where other people may find it you know, kind of scary, and here's the original, and here's mine. Because it's extremely detailed. I want to show you how I did this. So I'm doing a completely separate tutorial right now on how to do landscaping trees. They're so easy and quick and fun to do that nobody should be afraid of them. And so... That is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to teach you how to do landscaping trees that you can take into anywhere that has trees. Any book. Now, when you're looking through this book, there are tons and tons of pictures that have landscaping trees. So, if you have this book, there are plenty of opportunities to do the trees. See? And this is what I have a feeling people are afraid of. The whole thing, these blurry background trees look way harder than they actually are. So let's assume that nobody knows how to do trees. And I'm going to teach you a very easy way. Look at this. To add this, you can add it to landscape. You can now go into your books and do landscaping trees. So let's begin. Here is the tree, and I started identifying the structures. I did it in a dark green first, but then I'm going to kind of cover it with an umber, the dark umber. I usually give my trees at least two colors, the bark. Okay, and then... Here's one, a smaller one. This one was not included, and I drew it in myself. Then what you want to do is see where the tree peeps through. Now, on here, let me get a little bit of a lighter color. See on here, the bottom part? This, oh, wrong pencil. This is peeping through, so I want to put that in first. And maybe a little bit of green here. And this will give it an illusion of going through the trees. Now there's a little lighter area. I'm going to choose a different color, a lighter green. Okay, that's right there. So it's up the middle branch. And it seems to be peeping through here and over here. Now, you don't have to make this exact. Um, it, this is such a free and easy technique that it's going to come out good either way. Now, you're going to choose three different colors. And I've chosen dark green. I've gone to my 
um, Polychromos, and I'm using, this is Dark Flesh, let me see, Medium Flesh, and my Sienna Brown, okay? And I'm going to choose the darkest value, and that's all these little marks. And for the darkest value, you could either go with the um, dark green or with a um, an umber. Once you have your trunk done, you're going to choose the darkest color. Now, for this tree, I'm going to add, I'm going to actually use the green for a highlight. I'm actually going to go back and use the darkest color as dark umber. And what you're going to do is you're going to put in, now you can use the guidelines and you can add in your darker colors. If you don't use their guidelines, it's still going to come out good with this technique. You just eyeball it a little bit. This one just happens to have it. Some don't. I'm going to add in my own too. Now I'm going to go to like my mid-range color. This is the main color of this tree. And this is the, the way you're going to do it. I don't want you doing strokes. There's no round circles. There's no up and down. What I want you to do is dot. Hit the paper, move it on. Hit the paper, move it on. Hit the paper, move it on. And you're going to continue to do that. And if you jerk your hand slightly, it works even better. But don't travel with your hand on the page. And you're just going to keep filling it in. Wherever you want that color. Now, I've got the hand motion down. I could do it really super quick. Without messing up the stroke. And you can see the paper bouncing. That's what you're going to see. Now, the point, you can use a sharp point, but don't use ultra sharp. And that's why the area over here on the picture that I did, this area only took me about a half hour to do like the trees and stuff, maybe a half hour. And you just keep going. This is the one time that I say don't overwork it. When it's filled in and it looks good, walk away from it because it's just that type of thing where you don't want to, don't think about it, don't overwork it. Now I'm going to take the... Sienna Brown, and I'm going to fill in some areas where the pink isn't, and in some areas, maybe overlap the pink, but just practice not scribbling. It's just dots. It's like a little dot line. It's not complete. It's not like you're poking it and making dots. That's not what you're doing. Um, I'm sort of like vibrating my hand. And you could start up here, sort of like that. And by the time it hits the paper, you lift it up, you get the right consistency. And you can see it goes by really quick once you get the hang of it. Now this is just bottom layer. We're going to do more to it. Okay, we're getting full. So now I have random color on the page. 
and I'm going to go back to my darkest and I'm going to just do a little bit more with the dots near so I get like sort of a shadow in there. I'm not drawing in anything, just a little light color of the same as your shadow. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my first, my pink color, and I'm going to look for groupings. Like you might see one here. Looks like there's a nice group over here. And you're going to just connect some of those dots where the groupings are. Because that would be where the tree is the thickest. Then I go back with my medium color, which is the Sienna Brown. And I may do the same in the same areas as these groupings are starting to take shape. And the little groupings are going to start to connect. And the tree is going to look fuller as you get layers of these little groupings on. Overlap the groupings. That always looks good. Now I'm even going to add in a little bit of greenery because you know there's some green in the tree. So it never hurts to add just a little bit. And the tree is starting to look pretty full. Now another trick that I do do sometimes is I take this color, the main color of the tree, and I may get a darker version of that. So maybe I'll use a hotter pink. And you don't use this too much to change the color of the tree. You just use it to show depth. I may put a little bit of it underneath some of the groupings. Just layer upon layer. It's not hard just takes time and some muscles in your hand. It's not the most comfortable stroke in the world to do. You'll have to like shake it off and walk away a little bit from it a couple times, or at least I have to. You just don't want to show great detail. Then once I have it really built up, I use, well, you can use a little white pencil. I next, I use one of these erasers. Um, they're like pencil erasers. They're like, you can see the tip, it goes up. It comes with refills. These are the refills. And it's always good to have one of these because if you have like a tiny little specific line you need to get cleaned off the page. It works really well. And what I do is I create a little bit of space in between the clumps. And I sort of use it, it blends it slightly into each other. So that there's no lines. So it like, has like a dual purpose. And I'm just touching it with it so that the lines are blurred. I mean, if you like the way it looks without it, you can skip this step. But I usually do it just to get it really blended nicely. Because it definitely does add dimension. Remember, your eraser is also a tool. It doesn't just erase. You can do whole artwork with erasers and a graphite pencil, which I'm going to teach you in three more videos how to do.
just putting in a little bit more color into the branches. As I said, you don't want to overwork it. There's one tree. Now when I go in and say I want to do, let me see, how does this go? It ends right here. This is the treetop. So let's, let me, for contract, contrast, let's work a little bit on this. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use the greens. Just so that you could see trees together and how nice this technique works. That treetop ends there. It's my middle color. Okay. Now I'm going to get out my dark green. And I'm going to make sure this edge is nice and dark. Why? Because that would be where it's being shaded by the other tree. And you can see, even now, there's plenty of space for another color. And it looks like there's a little bit of yellow in there, so I'm going to add the yellow. Okay, and then you go on to the next one. This is a, this sort of goes down and around in this way. And then it goes all the way down to here. And there's some green and yellow trees. I'm going to do those. I don't want to start a whole new tree. Now, you can even look on this book or any other landscaping book. The outlines always look the same. Um, or should. There shouldn't be much detail in them. Because you want that just flowing effortlessly. Okay, I'm going to add a little dark into it. Giving it some depth. Now, I would do, this would not be my final. I would go back and I would do more layers of it. But for time purposes, this is fine. Okay, it's a little darker. It's actually in the picture as being lighter, but I could fix that later if I decide to do this picture. We'll just leave it. Not going to get arrested for taking artistic liberty. And then go back maybe with darken this part up a little bit. Show that the sun is coming in this direction. It's actually in the picture it's coming in the other direction, but I doubt I'll ever finish this page. And if I do, I'll fix it later. This is why I say don't overwork it. Once it looks good and you're happy with the way it looks, walk away from it. Now I'm just little tiny white areas. And there you have it. Teeny tiny landscape trees, just like it was. In fact, you do it the same way if you were painting. So now that's how you do trees that are in the distant and you get that fluffy, ethereal way. You just keep it working. If I had kept going around, I would have this. But now I want to show you a, a tree that's a little bit closer up that has a little bit more significance in it. Um, I'm going to, same as the way I did in the back, I'm going to start with the trunk and I'm going to start with, and I just rough out the shape that is lightly. And then there's a 
over here and then scattered down here. Okay, now I'm going to add in the dark brown. Now you can see there's not much there's not much detail on there. The bark is an illusion, so it's not so up close that we could see the individual marks. Because I already did a tutorial on how to do that when you're like really super up close to a tree. So I'm going to just work on the bark and I'll come back when we're doing the tree part. Now that I have my tree limbs filled in, now on the picture there is a sun ray coming through here. I'm going to ignore that for this picture just because, oh well, maybe I won't. If you're doing this picture, I would do my sun ray and I hate when they put in the lines. I would just fill in maybe with a little bit of yellow I'd probably Posca out those lines because it makes it look not good very lightly one layer to start you can always darken it in layer later This is just a small area, so I'm pascaring it out. On this tree, if you had that line in, you'd never achieve that sunburst look through the leaves. It would just look kind of silly. Okay, so I'm going to pick out my darks, which I'm going to use the dark green. And then I'll go in through my other colors when I'm getting them. And I'm going to just look on here on what areas are open. There's a lot of open areas that they left. And it's kind of like a cream. So that's what I think I'm going to do to hold the place is use my cream. Let's see, I have eggshell out. Maybe I'll just use my eggshell. Yeah, I can get away with eggshell. I'm going to just fill in the areas with the eggshell just so that I don't accidentally go through them. just makes it stand out a little better see they fool you because it's there so there should be one I guess that's the one that's there and there should be one right around in this area Well, that maybe will be enough for now. This is one. Okay, so now I'm going to take my dark green. Now, you're never going to match leaf for leaf, so forget that. We're just trying to get the look of this tree. And in the same type of motion as I did before. Go 
going all over the tree. This is going to take me about an hour to do. So I'm going to put you on hyperlapse for a bit. So this is about, I would say, 50% done. The next step after I get things going in the right places and where I want them is I defined a couple of branches inside using my dark umber. Uh, this is only has one. Uh, this only has one layer. Over here, I have more than one, but this gives the tree a little bit of dimension. Just random little branches inside of it. And then break them up. Let me get out of green. Do your things over them. That will make it look like it's coming in and out of the tree leaves. So like you might add in some more over here. Then what I like to do while I'm doing this, once I get a couple of layers built up, I take my eraser and I form, this is a putty eraser, and I form like a little mound on it, put it down, twist, lift, down, twist, lift, just random places. That will make your layers uneven and it will force some of the colors down into the paper. Oh, I was going to go change my lighting. I'm like, oh, there's a glare. It's a little thick. I did it a little much more than this. I should have done it lighter, but oh well. It doesn't look bad. Um, so just go over it. And now that I have uneven layers, I mean, I would have done more, but I would put more layers. And you just keep going and going until you like the way the tree looks. Now, you can see how dark the tree is compared to this. At this point, the tree doesn't look bad. And I would say I'm like, you know, 50% done. I still have to work it out over here. Keep adding in different greens. I've been picking up all the different greens that I have on my desk. Just every few minutes, switch it up. And just keep working it until the tree looks good. Now, another trick that you can do is leave lighter these leaves because they would be exposed to the sun. So that as the tree goes in, you make these leaves darker. And you can even see on the, the thing, all these out here are lighter, and all in here is darker. Now, the places where you left open, that's going to have the color of the sky. So, while it looked a little dopey when I did it earlier, and I removed the egg cream, the eggshell color, I didn't like the way it looked. It had too much yellow in it. The sky was a little bit more light blue. So I will, when I do the sky, if I do the sky, I will change that completely. Leave that to the end. And just keep layer after layer every once in a while use your eraser tap it down and then go add light you can add a little bit of yellow you can add a little bit of brown all the colors that you want to add because you can see there's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of 
brown in there also. So just remember the hand motion is like a vibration. You get that going, and yeah, it's tough. Your hand does get tired quickly. So you don't do it all in one day. <laughs> you don't have to. But resist that urge to do that. Just resist it. If your hand gets tired, just put it down. Walk away. Come back with a fresh sense about it. So this is how you do trees. You can see it's very simple. Just follow your hand. You can do trees now in any book. You can do your own landscaping. The freedom and the choice is yours. This is the procedure. You do this. It works out every time. And I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll be finishing up the tree. Now, this tree is going to be different because this is way close up. You got to have a lot of details in it. These trees are further out in the distance. You can't see the details on these trees. So that's where the difference are. Are these a little bit easier? Yeah, they're a little easier. <laughs> this is my bear. I'm going to stop playing Rocky music before I attempt it. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.